Hi everyone, it's Kerchi. People have been asking me to make a video on how I restore my Polly Pockets, so here's the video. I'm gonna show you guys how I clean my Polly Pockets, how I restore the logo, the characters, and as a bonus, how I make custom fairy wings for the fairy Polly Pocket dolls. Keep in mind that if you do decide to modify your Polly Pockets and you wanna sell them in the future, the value might go down. But if you're like me and you just collect these for fun and for your own happiness, feel free to do whatever you want. I have a Polly Pocket here waiting to be restored, so let's get started. This is the Polly Pocket I'm gonna be restoring today. This one is fast food restaurant all the way from 1992. So this is one of the earlier Polly Pocket models. Let's take a look at all the things that we need to fix. So the logo could definitely use some love. We can see that it rubbed off all around here. This part is decent, but we can definitely make that a whole lot better. There's also some dirt or gunk over here. I don't know what that is, but we're going to get rid of that. It might not show up that well on camera, but we can see that there are a lot of scratches throughout the compact, which is very common with Polly Pockets or any vintage toy because they have been used a lot and banged around. So underneath here, the same thing as well. And we're going to be restoring that too. On the inside, we can hear that there are characters. There they are. This is Polly and this is Patty. And you can see that they're also a little scratched up. Her shirt is missing some color, their shoes, which is very common because we're putting these in the little circles. So when you do that, the paint just chips off over time. You can also see that her face is almost gone. She doesn't have a mouth and her eyes have lost some detail, especially compared to Patty who has her full face intact. They're also a little bit loose at the hinge and I'm going to show you guys how to tighten those up. Inside of the compact itself, I can't really see too many things wrong with it. I did find a couple chips. So here's some missing paint here and on the tables, but otherwise we don't really have much to do here. I'm going to set these characters aside and do them last, but I'm going to start with a compact. So the very first thing I do when I receive it, which I haven't done since it's been sitting on my shelf, is disinfect and clean the whole thing. This Polly Pocket has traveled far and wide and has been touched by so many hands throughout the 90s and 2000s up till now, and it could use some cleaning. I'm just gonna take some Lysol here, which is hot commodity right now. This is probably worth more than Polly Pockets at this point. I'm gonna spray some on a paper towel, and I'm just gonna wipe down the Polly. Once I've wiped down the outside, I'm going to take a Q-tip, spray it with more Lysol, and clean the inside of the logo here and the inside of the compact. I'm going to take that same paper towel and I'm just going to spray some Lysol on my Q-tip like this and just start cleaning the inside. Since the logo is already pretty messed up, I'm not going to be too careful with it. You can rub the logo off with Lysol, just like I did right here. But with my restoration method that I do on all of my polys, I'm not going to worry about it because I'm going to restore it anyway. But for those of you who want to preserve the logo, especially if you have a logo that already looks nice, be very careful and avoid touching the logo with Lysol. That gunk we found earlier is just too stubborn and it's not coming off. So I'm going to take an X-Acto knife and I'm going to scratch it off. I'm going to do this very gently because I don't want to scratch the compact. That's pretty good. I got most of it off and I'm going to take that Q-tip again with Lysol on it and I'm just going to clean it up a little bit more. Whenever you find any stains on your compact that you can't get off with Lysol, I would recommend taking an X-Acto knife and just scratching it off ever so slightly. We can see that little blue thing right here. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's paint, but I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and scratch it right off. There we go. There's another spot right there. Let's see if we can remove that. So that one is a little tougher and I don't want to press harder than I already did because I'm going to scratch the whole compact. So I'm going to leave it as is. And at some point you just have to accept the fact that it's not going to be 100% perfect. 
You can also remove any tough stains with rubbing alcohol, especially if there's markers on the compact or Sharpie, but I would use that as a last resort. I typically avoid using rubbing alcohol because it's a little too harsh. Now that we have cleaned the outside, we're gonna go inside and do the same thing with the Q-tip and Lysol all around. I'm gonna spray this end of the Q-tip and I'm just gonna start cleaning all around here. I'm avoiding any areas with stickers. So this hardwood that you see here, that's a sticker. These are made of paper and if you put Lysol on them, they're gonna get ruined. So I'm just gonna leave those alone. I typically just clean it real quick. I'm not too meticulous about every little nook and cranny because there is a lot. And the only time I really do a full deep cleaning is if it's really, really disgusting. And I've only received one poly that was super gross and definitely reminded me of all the hands that have touched it. And there it is, it is all clean. You can even be a little bit extra and take some Mod Podge and just put a protective coating over these pictures. But I'm not gonna do that because this is closed for the most part when I display it. I'm gonna go back to the outside of the compact and just take a look around. And it's hard to see on camera, but it actually has a lot of little scratches. With scratches, you won't be able to remove them completely because that's just physically impossible, but you can reduce the appearance. This is what I use to polish my poly pockets and reduce the appearance of scratches. This is called Novus and you can buy this on Amazon. And here you can see there's a step one and a step two, but according to the instructions, you actually use them in the reverse order. So I'm gonna use number two first and finish off with number one. These are wonderful, wonderful products and you guys will see in a minute what a difference it will make. And I really hope it shows up on camera because in person, it makes the biggest difference. I'm gonna start with this. And what this does is it removes fine scratches, exactly what it says over here. This is what it looks like on the inside. It's kind of a brown, chocolatey, caramel kind of liquid. I take a fine cloth like this. So this is for cleaning jewelry. As you can see, I have used it a lot. I'm gonna take that number two, just squeeze it a little bit so that some product comes out. And I'm just gonna take about this much. So it's not really that much. I like to start from the bottom and I'm just gonna start polishing it in a circular motion. I like to do it in sections. So right now I'm doing just half of the bottom and I'm just continuing to polish it over and over again, just the same area. And I am applying a bit of pressure. Sometimes I even go super, super hard on the pressure, depending on the scratch. I don't know if you can already tell a difference, but look how shiny this is compared to this. It's ever so slightly, but you can definitely see it. If you see it on camera, imagine how it looks in person. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other half. Here it is up close after that first round of polish. You can see some products stuck in the logo back here, but we're gonna clean that off later, so I'm not worried about that right now. Right now, I'm just focused on removing the fine scratches all around this compact. And the same exact thing on the front. Again, you wanna make sure that you don't put any of this on the logo if you want to preserve your original logo. If you wanna use my logo restoration method, then you can go right ahead and just take that original logo off. I like the original logo, but I do think that it's a little bit dull. So there's nothing wrong with wanting to improve it. I'm going to take the darker side of my cloth and it doesn't really matter whether it's dark or light, but I like to finish off with the dark side because it's a little bit softer and I'm just gonna wipe off the excess product. To finish it off, I'm gonna move on to the number one step right over here. And this is just straight up liquid. And what it does is it shines the whole compact. It also says it's anti-fog, anti-static and dust repellent. Dust is everywhere, it is what it is, but I have noticed that my polys haven't been getting as dusty as everything else that I dust on a daily basis. So 
This product is definitely awesome. And I'm just gonna spray it on the dark side of the cloth here. And I'm spraying a lot of it. So don't be afraid to use a lot of this product. And I'm just gonna wipe the whole compact down. Again, I'm personally not worried about that logo. So I'm just going right in. I'm also making sure to rub this part because there's a little bit of the number two stuck on there and this will get it right off. I'm gonna open it and just clean off the edges here where I might have gotten some of that number two product. And there it is. I think it looks much more shiny than it was before. And you really have to take my word for it that in person, it makes the biggest difference. So once again, that is the Novus product. This is not a sponsored ad. <laughs> I actually really like these products and have been using them for years. You can also use these for any type of plastic, not just Polly Pockets. And I think this is originally over here. It says for autos, boats, planes, motorcycles. So this is real good stuff. Now comes the fun part, which is restoring the logo. I have a separate video on how I restore my logos with everything that you need. But for this video, I'm just gonna do it real quick. This is the gold adhesive vinyl that I'm gonna use. And you can see that it has already been cut. So all I need to do is peel those off like a sticker and stick them on the poly. We are almost halfway there and it is so beautiful already. When you do this on your own, if you do want to and have the tools to do it, you're just gonna feel so happy and satisfied. This is one of the most satisfying and awesome things that I've ever discovered. have it a brand new super shiny super gold Polly Pocket logo. Now it's time to restore the characters which is what most of you have been very curious about and as a bonus I added these two characters because I want to show you guys how I restore them as well. This is Chelsea from the Polly Pocket Water Fun Park and you can see that her hair is almost gone. What is going on Chelsea? Quarantine has really gotten to her roots. And this is Lulu from the Fairy Spells Locket. And what I'm gonna do with her is remove her wings, which are very flimsy and kind of cheap looking, and make her brand new wings. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint to restore all the characters. I have these super fine tipped brushes, perfect for painting super tiny things. And of course my paint palette. I'm gonna start with Little Miss Polly, so I'm gonna take the colors that I need which are yellow for her hair, orange for her headband and shoes. I'm gonna start with her hair because I always start with the hair. I don't know why, you don't have to, but it's just one of those things for me that I want to. The trick to this is to get a lot of product on your brush. I'm just gonna paint it right over her head. It's really hard to film and paint at the same time because my natural field of view is actually here, not on camera like this. So refocus, let's do this. So far that is looking pretty fresh. No chips, no cracks, just pretty curly blonde hair. I'm gonna let her dry and move on to the other characters. So I'm just gonna set her aside. While I still have yellow on my brush, I'm gonna go right into Patty here because she has some yellow on her outfit and I'm just gonna go over everything that's yellow and I'm even going under here. Under here, it's actually blank. There's no paint there, but I like to take my own liberties and just, just make it better. I've also done several characters where I will just straight up change the color of their outfit. So really it's up to you as long as you don't plan on reselling these in the future because the more you modify them, the lower their value is. That's just the thing with vintage items. So just be very careful about what you do with them. And if you do modify them in any way, make sure that you like it 
and plan on keeping it forever. I'm going to set her aside to dry as well. Now I'm going to do Chelsea, which I can't wait to do because her hair needs a lot of work. I'm going to take that dark brown and the brand doesn't really matter. I have Americana. I have Apple Barrel. I have Craft. It doesn't really matter. I even have Deco Art. So I have so many different brands and that's not even all that I have. All I'm looking for is affordability. So these come by the cents. I think I paid like 50 cents each for these and the color. She's gonna dip right in there in that dark brown and start filling her hair in. It doesn't match exactly, but it's pretty close. And what I'm gonna do is paint her whole entire hair. So everything looks unified. I'm also gonna give her a second coat after this because the bald spots are a little stubborn. I'm actually tapping the paint more than just dragging it across so that you really get a lot of product on her. I'm gonna let her dry before I do the second coat. I'm gonna go back to Polly and her hair has dried nicely. I'm gonna move on to the orange parts, which are her headband and shoes. And again, back to Patty because she also has orange colors on her outfit. back to Chelsea and give her that second coat for her hair. That already looks so much better. Back to Polly again for her lavender dress. This lavender is a little bit darker than her actual dress, but I think it looks so much better and more vibrant. So I'm going to keep going with it. Now back to Patty with this light blue. And that's basically what I do when I repaint all of my polys. I just keep them on a rotation so that while some are drying, I can move on to the next one. Now back to Chelsea with her outfit. It's going to be the seafoam green right over here. This does get pretty messy over time especially when I paint a lot. And I already have some paint on my hands. Her face has a chip in it, so I'm just gonna take some paint and just redo her whole face. It's okay if some of her features are still showing because I'm gonna use that as a guide when I draw her face. And I'm just gonna finish off Patty by adding a new coat for her hair. And we're done with her. For Polly's face, I just scratched off her eyes so that I can start over. So I scratched it off with this X-Acto knife very gently. And what I'm going to do is just draw her a brand new face. I am going to use this acrylic marker. This brand is Artistro, which is a really good brand. And I actually just recently discovered this. And it's basically acrylic paint, but in marker form. So when drawing her face, this will actually be a lot easier because it's more natural to draw than to paint. So I'm going to start drawing her face here. And we're done. Obviously, I'm joking. This typically happens when you're painting really tiny things. Sometimes you just add a little bit more paint than you want and things end up looking wonky. I'm going to show you guys how to fix this. This is actually something that I did on purpose. So I did a big blob for her mouth. Then I'm going to take an X-Acto knife and I'm going to scratch away any extra paint to form a smile. There you go. That's much better. It's a little lopsided, but I kind of like it because it makes her look cute and silly. So that's a technique I like to do if I mess up with the paint. I can also just start over by wiping it away or scratching the whole thing off. But in that case, I did that on purpose because it's actually a lot easier to just do a blob and then shape with the X-Acto knife. This is Chelsea. I did her face earlier 
and because I had to restore her skin because it had a chip in it, I couldn't use that X-Acto knife technique of scratching away the mouth. So I had to do so many different tries to try to get her mouth like this. Now remember the compact had a chip in it. I'm gonna go back and paint over that as well. I'm gonna take that same orange and I'm just gonna fill in the little chips here. And that's pretty much all there is to it. There's another one over here, so I can take some blue and fill that in, another one here. And it's really up to you how far you wanna go with nitpicking everything. But it's all the same. You just take some acrylic paint, paint over it, and you're done. As a bonus, I'm gonna be doing brand new fairy wings on Little Miss Lulu. So the first thing I'm gonna do is rip off these ugly cheap paper wings. There you go, now she has no wings. And now I'm gonna sculpt her new wings. For her wings, I'm gonna make them lavender so they can match her shoes. So I'm just gonna take a little bit and a little goes a long way here. So I'm gonna take really tiny pieces and I'm gonna roll them into two little balls. This is a way for me to gauge the size. So since they match, I'm gonna go ahead and move on. From here, I'm gonna take a corner and I'm going to roll it into a teardrop, just like that, same thing here. Then I'm gonna flatten it. Then I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife and I'm gonna cut just a little bit below the half point. So imagine this being the half point and I'm gonna cut right here, just like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Now I'm gonna cut this off like a slice of pizza and just get rid of that piece right there. Same thing here. Now I'm gonna take this tool with the dull edge right here and this is my shaper tool. And I'm just going to shape these little sharp edges into round edges. So just like this. I'm gonna keep shaping it till I'm happy with it. So. This takes me the longest because sometimes I don't like the shape and I just go back and reshape. I'm also going to do kind of a test. So I'm going to put Lulu here and here, and I think it looks good. Now I'm going to take this sharp pointy tool and I'm going to create a crease right over here. I'm just going to drag this along like that. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Using this flat blade, I'm going to scrape them off this tile and I'm going to flip them over so I can do the same thing on the back. I'm just going to put it on my finger so that I don't ruin what I did on the other side. And for the back, I just want to add a little bit of that crease back here. Before I bake it, I'm going to do another test to see if I like it. So here's what it should look like when I glue it onto her and I think it's really cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and bake this. Here are the wings, they have been baked. I also forgot to cut off the tip before baking, but no worries because you can do it after it's baked too. So what I'm gonna do is just cut off that little corner there because I wanna create enough surface area to be able to glue it onto the poly. So I'm just gonna take this little razor tool and cut off the tip. Here's how it looks up close. So all I did is cut off that little tip. I'm going to do the same thing here. Now what I'm going to do is coat it in glitter Mod Podge because I want it to be very glittery. The wings are now glittery and beautiful and I'm going to glue it to Lulu. I'm just going to use super glue, very basic, nothing special here. I put a little bit on a toothpick and I'm just going to add it to the back of Lulu. And there is Lulu with her beautiful new sparkly wings. Of course, you don't have to make yours look like this. You can do so many different types of wings. You can do butterfly wings, different shapes, whatever your heart desires. Now that the characters are all painted and restored, the final step is coating them with a varnish. This varnish that I'm using is called polycrylic and it's glossy because I want them all to be super shiny. I'm gonna start with poly here 
And I'm just going to dip into my varnish and coat the entire thing. I'm actually only doing the bottom half because I need to hold on to something, which is the top half. But once the bottom dries, I'm going to move on to the top. I also coat the hinge because it actually makes the hinge a little tighter. way when you varnish an original Polly Pocket face like her face is fully intact be very careful not to swipe too hard so with this one I'm just dabbing it like this because in the past I have actually wiped off an original Polly Pocket face and here are the finished characters they're super shiny they look brand new Aside from the differences in faces, you can't even really tell. Her hinge was loose as well, and now it's perfect. And that is how I restore my Polly Pockets. Yes, it's tedious, it's a little difficult, but like with anything else, the more you do it, the better you get. And again, feel free to take your own creative liberties. You can change the colors of their clothes, add patterns. You can do whatever you want, as long as you don't plan on selling them in the future. If you have any questions, leave a comment. I read all the comments and try to respond to as many as I can. So if you have any questions about the techniques or what brands to buy, what materials to use, go ahead and drop a comment. Thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful for you like this video and subscribe to support my channel. My shop, Pixqueaks, is also now open. You can check that out in the description below. <laughs>